Now, what is happening on University of Hyderabad campus is not uh, an isolated uh, incident. It is happening as a part of a larger strategy of subverting the institutions, dismantling the structures of so, higher education. If you look at uh, the scenario at the national level, it is JNU, University of Hyderabad, Jagopur, Allahabad, Aligarh, Ferguson College, Baroda. These are all prestigious institutions of this country. In fact, these are the very functioning universities in their respective states. But why do you think these things are happening? Why you think today, suddenly, that all the universities which are known internationally we are facing a major crisis. I suspect that the Brahminical Manuvadi ideology, where Manu said that the women, Dalits, and the laboring class should be prevented from access to knowledge. And Manu has also said that if at all they make any attempt to have access to knowledge, that the lead, lead should be poured on their ears. This is the cruel, brutal ideology that this nation has inherited. A section of the society inherited this ideology. But there also has been ideologies who stood for the people, who stood for democratic causes, who stood for a more humane society, who stood for equitable society. So this nation has two traditions, one very cruel, well, brutal, undemocratic tradition. There is also tradition of struggle. There is a st struggle tradition of the liberation. A equality, higher human values, a far better human society, where equal you know, human beings are respected, human beings live as equals. Now I think certainly after six to seven decades, we entered into a phase where the, whatever progress history made, whatever civilization progress is there, they want to push it backwards. I think that strategy is you know, unfolding itself. If you look at these all universities where Ferguson College... Really? Such a reputed college in... Now suddenly they said there was an anti-national you know, slogan and suddenly principal was pressurized and the 200 students, you know, they want to book the students. And why is it happening? I mean, these are all the functioning universities, functioning colleges. They have served a great cause of higher education. I think therefore, friends, your struggle is not merely what happened in University of Hyderabad. The struggle has a import, the struggle has a message. The struggle is that for the democratic values, Struggle is to democratize the university administration, university system. Struggle is for autonomy of the universities. Struggle is for more access to the marginalized sections of the society. And as the marginalized sections started coming to higher education, now there is the strategy to prevent that you know the, the whatever access they have had, you know, because of the struggles of the Dalits, struggles of the you know, Adivasis, struggles of the women. And therefore today we enjoy certain rights. And I think a stage has come where they want to push it backward. They want to push history backward. I think therefore, the you know, young boys and girls of Hyderabad University who are so valiantly, you know, who are so courageously fighting this battle, you are fighting for a democratic society. Please remember that. You are fighting for democratic values. You are fighting not only for your rights, but the rights of the succeeding you know, generation of students. You have to pass on a more democratic university to your next batch of students. Every batch owes something to the succeeding batches. We should not think that we are just fighting an immediate battle. We are fighting a battle of our higher values. I think that is what is all that happened. Now the entire strategy that of the Vice Chancellor, now it is a minimum accepted principle. I have been a part of the university system for 40 years. I worked in a number of institutions. It is an accepted principle if there is an inquiry, particularly a judicial inquiry, head of the institution is always asked to go on leave. And till the inquiry is commit, uh, completed and the inquiry report is submitted, unless inquiry commission clears the, the vice chancellor of whatever you know, complaint that they, they have, the vice chancellor is normally not supposed to join that. It's a minimum. That is what is expected of a head of the institution. But then, in this case, the judicial inquiry is not completed, they have not submitted the report, and there is a case pending in the High Court that there is a trial, and therefore, because the idea is that if a head of the institution joins back, he will interfere with the inquiry, and he will use the office for, you know, the MNF, for, you know, influencing the whole process, and that's the reason why it is accepted that he is on leave. 
till he is cleared of all the, you know, I mean, complete agonist scheme. And if the inquiry goes against the scheme, the vice chancellor will have to quit because, you know, the commission finds him called for managing the institution. The MHRD committee which came here, it also reported that the university has not handled the issue properly. It is, you know, MHRD report, I am quoting. And in spite of that, if the vice chancellor has come back, it is not propriety. It's not me, it's not propriety to come back. Because you are pitted against the power. And added to that, of course, I mean the, the incident that happened, his return, and then it triggered, you know, a big tension on the campus and that followed certain, you know, I mean incidents and then of course police entered. And I have been a civil rights man for the last 40 years. I have seen what police is capable of doing. And you know, they have absolutely this higher institution of higher learning. There are certain norms that the police has to observe. They entered and they could have carried a dialogue. I can tell you that at least there were three major incidents when I was working here. We have prevented and we have seen to it that the police do not enter the campus. It is a minimum norm. But the police enter, not only enter, but the way they have handled our students is completely uncalled for, it's unconstitutional, illegal. It's much against all human rights, accepted human rights. I think therefore, we really, you know, I mean, asking the government of uh, Telangana, and of course the Telangana government, yesterday you must have, I don't know how many of you have seen the assembly debate, but when I watched the assembly debate for a, almost a couple of hours, I think it was, you know, I mean, I, I compliment the Telangana assembly, the way the, 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 the uh, MLA's you know, spoke about the University of Hyderabad. The way, you know, the concern was expressed on the assembly with the result, government was compelled and the chief minister of Telangana promised on the floor of the house that he will request the prime minister to recall the, but this three times he repeated that he will request the prime minister to recall and then he said he will order an inquiry on the excesses of the police. We hope that this will sit on the floor of the house and when the house insisted that they should pass a resolution, he said why resolution I am promising. I am promising the house and he said, I will convey to the Prime Minister not only as my opinion but of the sentiment of the house. I mean, I think you know, at least you know, this much has happened. We only hope that the Chief Minister of Telangana will keep up his promise. It is on the floor of the house. And therefore, he will pursue it and he will see that the University of Hyderabad come back to normals. But at the same time, I would also like to impress on you, this has been as a teacher my concern, that your struggle has to be at the ideological level. Your struggle has to be, you know, with the ideas. Your struggle has to be with the entire obscurantist ideology. But even a little violence on the part of the students, sometimes out of sheer emotion, excitement, age, you know, that. But you must know that even if there is a little bit of violence, the, 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 the state, the administration, everybody takes advantage of it. And I think we have to be convinced totally. In uh, JNU, you have a lesson to learn. In JNU, including ABVP, they said that the police entry, they are objecting. Right? And three leaders of the ABVP resigned from their you know, organization on the objection that the police entered their campus. But when Kanaya Kumar, somebody entered and beaten up Kanaya Kumar, then you know what he did is that they have taken this fellow who beaten him and he offered a cup of coffee. And then they said, why have you behaving like this? but they have not retaliated. If they have retaliated, then that would have led to trigger. This is the standardized strategy of the rulers. Standardized strategy provoke, and the minute you react, that is taken, and then everybody, you know, outside says, no, there was vandalism, there was a hooliganism, there was, you know, this violence, how do you defend the violence? PPP, you know, the media keeps on asking me, how do you justify? Of course, I say that they are young people. And they are, they are terribly the centuries of deprivation. Anger of a Dalit is not anger only on the University of Hyderabad. The anger of a Dalit is the deprivation of centuries. And uh, anguish. And this is a generation which is coming up. This is a gener you are the people who have to lead this country. Organic intellectuals of this country alone can make this country more democratic, not the upper caste. You know, boys and girls coming from the most marginalized background are the future heroes and future leaders. Today the way Kanaya Kumar emerged, the way Rohit you know, has that. I think Rohit, I have a feeling that many people are asking that why did he not blame? He could have put a simple word that the Vice Chancellor, you know, and then you know, he would become a culpable homicide. But the Rohit thought, and he thought that to create a better society, 
to create to blame individuals to blame you know some in, initial organization he thought he has gone beyond he has gone beyond and then he the, if you look at his suicide note or no his the whatever he has written on facebook i think it was an extraordinary mind it had a vision for the future. it had a vision for the future. it has conveyed a message to all of you that how you react to a situation then he said of course what type of society we are living in what is the type of people we are living in why human beings are alienated from nature human beings have stopped loving the nature they have died he said it has become difficult to love human beings without being hurt this is a most profound statement on the state of the face of this country but rohit gave us a vision he gave us a direction right and therefore i think keeping rohit as you know your reference point and as a source of inspiration and also the kanaya kumar event whatever is happening learn from jnu but jnu boys and girls were lucky you are not that lucky they are lucky because 300 professors of jnu went to vice chancellor and got all the students to you solidly by the students and every day they are organizing on the nationalism on the freedom and on azadi they are organizing every day getting more and more educated getting more and more enlightened right and that today i have seen the interview of the jnu vice chancellor now i thought that he would behave in a mad way but the interview is such that he said i will not allow police to interfere in my administration he said that the autonomy of jnu will be protected student union election will be conducted he said we have healthy traditions he gave a long interview in economic time because that <coughs> is what is the achievement of jnu students and faculty as far as our faculty and our you know i mean the, the, the colleagues and i worked with them i have lot of respect for some of them they have done extremely good work but as far as students are concerned the concern for the student not only you are our student i mean i can tell you it's not boasting even the apvp student whenever they are a crisis came to me and they used to say sir where from apvp i said so what i mean i am your teacher i am your teacher so you are concerned with the student but today you know politics change so much and the students our nations are completely you know influenced by outside but my appeal to you is mean? protect your university first then you can carry your ideological battle but if you destroy your university what is that that you are going to fight i think it is for the responsibility of the students to protect their institution sir and i have a feeling that that university of hyderabad students i am proud i am proud of all of them and if you had not what what then i would have felt ashamed of myself that i work in this institution i know that how students fight how the people in this country fight i think you have to be battle very high i know you feel sometimes a little risk is taken but the risks are taken only by young people this is our take to protect gandhi sadar who will protect the gandhi in the society it is supposing you abdicate your responsibility then who will give the new values to the society who will lead the society you are the people right you are the people who have to lead the society and therefore i really fully compliment and i am also happy that the bail has been granted to all of us today and i demand that all the cases should be withdrawn absolutely without in unconditionally all i mean cases should be withdrawn and no more booking of the cases no more harassment on the campus i think we are demanding from the local police no more harassment i mean this is too much what you have done and if you have any respect for the institution of higher learning please respect the autonomy of the university and see that no you do not interfere too much in the university and ask the university to handle this problem every institution should handle its own problem and you know in japan if the student create a problem the police come and report to the university saying that your students are there please handle your student in our case in the other way around the <laughs> <laughs> police to handle our problem so we have in our problem police should report to the university that your students have created some problem please look into that and you know one of the senior police officer was asking me why professor hargopal in japan when the student create problem they report police report to the university in india you call us to the university i said that's our unfortunate that that's how we are, when we are trained we think every problem is solved by police no university can be run with the help of the police no university can run with the support of one section of student no vice chancellor can depend on one section of student after all you are all students how can vice chancellor run the institution without winning the confidence of all of you without cooperation of all of you? so therefore i think this partisan politics on the part of the head of the institution partisan politics on the part of the state and the police i think this is something which we have to really debate discuss and fight 
I think therefore, friends, I am happy, I am proud that you stood your ground. Last two months you have been fighting and uncompromisingly you are fighting. I think this is what you are, the legacy that you are giving to the next generation. They will be remembering you that the 19, you know, 2016 batch of students gave us values, gave us a democratic tradition, they gave us a legacy. And the succeeding generation will improve this university, will fight for the democratic value. So fighting for democratic value is a value in itself. <laughs> Please remember that. Fighting for democratic values is a value in itself. And if you do not fight, this nation is in trouble. This is going to be a you know, sort of fascist you know, governance. And we have to live through a very terrible times. If we do not contain this process, I think we are whole nation. The Madhula is voiceless people, the Adivasi, the Dalis. I mean, what is going to happen to all of them? It is you people who have to give a democratic culture. So create a democratic culture and your struggle is in promoting the democratic culture. And as a teacher, I compliment all of you. Please keep on the struggle. Keep, keep, keep on the struggle because that is the only thing that you can do the next generation of students. That is the only justice you can do to yourself. That is the only justice you can do to memory of Rohit Vemula. I think this is what I thought I must share this agony, anguish, but at the same time, I am proud that you are keeping the struggle on. I think this is something that I am proud of. Thank you very much. And keep it on. I mean, we are all there to support you. Don't worry about that. But don't think that in violence. That's my only my appeal is that restraint, observe restraint, maximum restraint you have to observe because that is the only thing on which the state interferes and then <coughs> subverts even such a great struggle that which you have carried. Single incident, you know, they, they is enough for them to blame all of us and say that, no, they will say tomorrow Harvapal came and he instigated violence. This is what they are going to say that. Now, although I am telling you, please don't indulge in violence, still they will say that he may came and instigated the student. This is the standardized strategy of accusing people and finding all of us guilty. Please, you know, be careful, but then don't be, don't lose your heart. Great struggles are fought, students fought great struggles, French students, imagine what type of, you know, I mean, struggle the French student carry against Digale, and the students always fought. It's the students in the world who have contributed to the social transition. You are more exposed, you are privileged, and you have come from, the, many of you have come from the rural background, you know what is suffering, what is poverty, what is marginalization, what is discrimination. Who else will fight? If you don't fight, who else will fight? And many people say, no, why students should fight? They should study. Yes, they should study, but they should also stand for certain value. What is the point in studying and you know, getting a career and mechanically living the life? I mean, that's not the life. Life is a struggle. Life is a struggle. Meaning to life is struggle for values. Meaning to life is a struggle for values. It's not that, no, say, I am happy that I was you know, teaching. I am happy because I am part of civil rights movement as a teacher. So I think you know, the, the happiness comes from the struggle for values. And that is the only message that you have to learn from what you have done with me. But I can compliment all of you. Please keep on the struggle. Let University of Hyderabad become truly democratic, concerned for the boys and girls who come from the rural background, the marginalized background. Let University become more sensitive. And the next batch of students will have to have a more sensitive <coughs> university. That is your responsibility to create a sensitized university. And this struggle will contribute to that. Don't think that your struggle has gone through. No, this struggle has made several people think and rethink. And please keep it on. Keep the torch of the light. Right. Thank you very much.